Hello everyone, in this video we will cover Kiss Slicer and some of its settings. Kiss Slicer is a program that converts an STL file and turns it into machine readable G code. If you're not sure what an STL file is, please see our video on Tinkercad. Kiss Slicer is a slicing program, in other words, it takes your .stl 3D model and creates a toolpath for each of the vertical layers from bottom to top. It is free to download for a single nozzle 3D printer. If you have a dual nozzle printer, you will need to buy the Pro version, which is only $42 at this time. Now normally, you would download Kiss Slicer from KissSlicer.com here. You would go to Get Kiss Slicer, download this latest stable version, and you would install that. But if you're using Polyprinter 3D printers, you need to download the pre-configured Kiss Slicer that is installed with the Polyprinter software. So we'll go to polyprinter.com go to downloads and we'll download the software. You can also get a user manual on the uh, poly printer machine itself right here. You must have a 64-bit version of Windows to run the software. Go ahead and download the software and we'll run the exe file. Next, install. This installs a copy of Kiss Slicer pre-configured specifically for the poly printers and the poly printer software that controls the printer. You do not need to install the USB driver at the end if you're not going to connect your computer to an actual poly printer. So uncheck the install USB driver box and click finish. Now that we have Kiss Slicer installed, go ahead and go to search, type in Kiss and it should pop up here. Let's start it up. And for some reason when you first start it up, it gets chopped off at the bottom so we have to maximize the screen so you can see it all. Now you can see the printer is already configured for the poly printer. Go ahead and open your STL file I'll be using the STL file we made in the Tinkercad video. Left click and hold moves the plane side to side. The scroll wheel zooms in and out. And right click and hold moves the platform about the axis. You can change how many copies you wish to print using the count selector. Notice if we try to print more and more copies of these, it takes up more and more room on the surface. And at a certain point, we run out of room and your platform turns red indicating it cannot print outside of its platform area. So let's take that back down to one. And you can actually change the rotation of the object um, right here. If you right click on the image in the right panel, it'll bring up a menu. Here you can reload the original file, revert the original height if you forget. The show mesh to extruder map is for the pro version and lets you map to different printer nozzles. The free version only lets us use one nozzle anyway. We can scale by X or XYZ. The inch to millimeter is useful if you made your object in millimeters but you typed the numbers in in inches. If you open your file and it's crazy tiny you might have had this problem. Let me open a quick example. This will also show you how to print multiple items in one print you just open additional files. So here's our example. Notice this is supposed to be a 5 by 5 by 1 inch 
object, but I was actually on the millimeter scale when I created this. So if I had made that mistake, I can right click on this image, click on inch to millimeter, and voila, I actually have the correct dimensions. Anyway, let me close this block and get back to our model. We already know how to change the count, but lower mesh and Z is useful if your object is hovering above the platform. Um, if I move it down minus 10, you'll kind of see the idea of what's going on here. So if you were to make your object using Tinkercad or your other CAD software, and it was actually floating above the plane here, then this would obviously not print out. You can't print this out or it would just spew filament out like spaghetti. To fix this, just lower mesh in Z, which I actually want to lower to zero because that was done correctly to begin with. Transform Mesh has many great orientation features. A general rule for all prints is that you want the flattest part to be on the bottom. Our object is flat on the bottom and only gets smaller as it gets higher. This is a very easy print. I'm going to open a more complex print to talk about overhangs. As you can see, this 3D part has sections that overhang because there's absolutely nothing underneath it to support it. Luckily, Kiss Slicer can automatically add support so you can print objects with overhang. To be clear, small overhangs or overhangs that are gradual usually do not need support when using the poly printer. Press profile settings and we'll look at a few of the settings Kiss Slicer has. One very important thing here is how do you know the person before you didn't completely mess up the settings in Kiss Slicer? That could ruin your print or even damage the printer. I'm going to really mess some settings up real quickly here. Oh, let's break everything. Let's make this horrible, horrible, horrible things. If I just, um, let's see, let's just, let's turn the nozzle into something horrific like 5 millimeter nozzle, which is completely untrue. Okay, so let's say this is completely messed up, number of loops, 500. This, this would not print out very well. This would, might even damage the printer. To return all the settings back to a known state, just go to File and Quick Restore Reference Settings. So everything gets put back into its uh, .normal stock profile. Now you can move the print to a different location on the bed here. Let me show the bed. You can uh, print it out back here. Maybe you have a favorite spot on the printer. Who knows? I always just choose center and I'm pretty happy with that result. To actually see any changes you make, you need to slice your part and view models and paths. So let's go ahead and slice this. And we're going to click on models and paths here. I like to keep 3D on. So now you can see the support material that was automatically created. So the slider on the right lets you see the individual layers. And you can see what's underneath, everything underneath that particular layer too. Uh, this little button right here actually draws the layers underneath that. If you uncheck it, you get to see just the one layer. So this is the bottom and some support material. It's kind of the middle of this object. Uh, the slider at the top, and you will see how it's actually printed on that layer. So I want to show you that it actually starts at this particular location and it goes around once and goes around the outer rim and then right here it crosses back over and goes inside and it creates three loops before it starts filling the infill in. 
and that's that complete layer. Change the num loops to five. So where's num loops? Let's change this to five. And let's go ahead and change our infill style to rounded. We have to slice it again. So let's go down to where we were before and notice the infill is different. It's rounded. It's very similar to a hexagon but prints a little bit faster. It has about the same strength. So the strength of this infill is a lot better than the straight infill. And notice as we go back along our path we now have five loops around. One, two, three, four, and five before it starts doing the infill. So I like to see how the previous layer was laid so I'm going to turn back on the layers below it too. So you can see it goes pretty much straight down. So let's restore our settings by hitting Control, Alt, and R which is the shortcut key and we'll reslice. And we'll change the infill here slide it all the way over to vase. We're going to slice it and notice that the top of it is open now so literally like a vase and there is absolutely no infill inside of our object. It's completely hollow. It, it's not only hollow it doesn't have a top either. 25% infill will usually create a very strong part and it won't warp when you print it. 100% infill waste material and you will usually warp when printed. Let's go ahead and move this to hollow and slice it again and you can see it's basically the same thing but you get the top of your part printed. So completely hollow. Let's go ahead and move this back to Control alt r for our previous settings. Slice it again. This is pre-configured for a very fast print. So when you're on straight it will print much faster. Um, this fast and precise is exactly what it means. Um, we usually keep it at 50. It prints very fast and is usually very structurally sound. Um, I would, if you're doing just a very rough draft maybe just do it super fast. Um, your precision will slow it down a lot and it will take forever to get your print done and you won't gain that much more accuracy by putting it on this precision level here. I would usually keep it about 50. So the last thing we'll talk about in this tab is jitter and angle. Slice your part again and view a single layer near the middle. So it's already sliced. Let's view the middle here and you can see how it switches back and forth. But let's go back to where we were talking about the seam back here. So you can see that's where it starts and where it crosses over right there. So that's kind of our seam and your angle is telling you where to put that seam. So I'm going to change the angle to the back right slice it again and we'll have to go back down to around here and you can see right here is where that is now so this is placing that seam in this back right corner here. This is where jitter can randomly start the different layers at different points so it kind of spreads a seam around to become invisible. Change jitter to 90 degrees and we will change this angle to just the very back of the part and what that will do is that's going to randomly place it between I guess 90 degrees would be from here to here so on this part pretty much this region let's go ahead and slice this just so I can show you so if you come down here you will see it goes from this corner and then it goes to this corner so it kind of spreads that seam around to where you don't actually have a visible seam. And if you look there's one that's done in the middle. And you can actually go back and see 
where it crosses. So these are the basic settings under the Style tab, and if you wish to learn more, you can download the Kiss Icer manual from their site. Let's move to the Support tab. Let's take a look at that. And let's go ahead and look at the extremes. Let's turn support off right here. And we'll slice it. And I'll look at everything below that to see our model, the entire thing. And as you can see, there is absolutely no support. This probably would not print out successfully. There's nothing to hold this up. So let's turn it on ultra support and reslice it. Now you can see there is a ton of support printed underneath that to hold it up so you get a successful print. So these are the extremes. This is obviously going to support that very, very well. But this also wastes a lot of extra material and it may be hard to peel this off later. So it's kind of a game between using the least amount of material and having your part turn out correctly. So one other thing is we're going to go ahead and turn on sheath mode. This gives your support an outer skin to keep it more stable. So sheath mode is here. Turn on main and reslice. So as you can see, that basically gives support to your support. Now, one other thing is if your part has a very small base, it may not stick to the bed of the printer and start sliding around and ruining your print. So let's turn off support just so I can show this to you better because I don't want the support material in the way of what we're going to be doing here. So in order to make a more stable base for your print, increase the diameter to 5 under this brim setting. So this is your diameter. Let's turn that to 5. And let's slice it and see what happens. 5. We jump over to another setting. Now I can slice it. Okay, so that puts this little brim on, which helps the bottom stick to the platform. And if you want even more support, you can kind of make the height and raise the height of that brim up to, let's just say, three millimeters. And we will slice it again. So you can see this is much, much thicker now. That's going to be really hard to pull this off. And there's a lot of wasted material here. This isn't really doing anything, so we could just put a fillet in there, reslice it, and then that kind of gradually brings it up. I don't know how hard this would be to get off. I would sus suspect it would be fairly hard. So I would just refer revert all of this back to normal. Hit Control-Alt-R to bring it back there, and I can put my brim back right here. So these are the basic settings you need to adjust before you slice your part and 3D print it. Um, everything else, uh, leave it set for the poly printer. If you have any problems, come to the undergraduate staff and we will help you with your print. Now let's go back to the UTA key, key tag. Since this is a flat piece with no overhangs, all I need to do is slice it and save the G-code. So it's sliced. It does have a brim on it, which I can peel this off later. This should print just fine. And then I'm going to save my G-code. That does it for this video on Kiss Slicer. Our next video in this series is on the poly printer itself and how to take your G-code and turn it into a real physical object.